The Life Cycle of Trypanosoma cruzi in the Invertebrate Host In this video, we see the life cycle of Trypanosoma cruzi in the insect. The life cycle of Trypanosoma cruzi in the Invertebrate Host begins with the ingestion of tripomastigotes present in the blood of the vertebrate host during a blood meal. In the stomach of the insect, Tripomastigotes transform into epimastigotes and spheromastigotes. Note that some of the parasites in transitional forms, epimastigotes and spheromastigotes, are lysed in the stomach. Epimastigotes pass through the stomach to the intestine, divide by binary fission, and attach to the paramicrovular membranes of the intestinal cells. Note that this adhesion occurs predominantly through the region of the flagellum. Epimastigotes are released and travel to the rectum. At the most posterior region, many of the epimastigotes transform into metacyclic tripomastigotes and adhere to the cuticle lining, the epithelium of the rectum, and the rectal sac of the insect. When the parasites leave the epithelium, the metacyclic tripomastigotes may be eliminated in the urine or feces of the insect. During subsequent insect bites, metacyclic tripomastigotes infect the vertebrate host starting the cycle over. The life cycle of Trypanosoma cruzi in the human host. In this video, we see the life cycle of Trypanosoma cruzi in the human host. The Trypanosome life cycle begins with the triatomine insect, which is infected with T. cruzi, biting a human host. Following the ingestion of blood, the metacyclic tripomastigotes are released with the feces from the insect near the area of the bite. Note that this form has great motility. Observe that the parasite enters the host through the bite site when the host scratches the site or when the parasite moves to a region covered by mucosa. The parasite reaches the mammalian bloodstream and subsequently invades different cell types that it encounters, such as macrophages, muscle cells, epithelial cells, and neurons. In this example, the attachment of the tripomastigote form of the parasite to the macrophage surface is observed. The process of internalization via phagocytosis begins with the formation of pseudopods. During and after the internalization of the parasite, the parasitophorus vacuole assembles. Host cell lysosomes migrate toward the internalization region and fuse with the parasitophorus vacuole. The lysosomal content is released in the vacuole. However, the parasite is not affected. In the vacuole, the tripomastigote transforms into an amastigote. This transformation is accompanied by the disruption of the parasitophorus vacuole membrane. The amastigotes are released into the cytoplasm of the host cell and divide multiple times. Observe how many amastigotes are accumulating through the division process. They can occupy the entire cytoplasm of the host cell. Following division, the amastigotes transform into tripomastigotes, which show intense and constant movement that culminates with their bursting out of the cell.
the tripomastigotes reach the extracellular space and, subsequently, the bloodstream. The parasites will now infect new cells. <laughs> 